We're taking a look at In the Garden of Unearthly Delights, the paintings of Josh Kirby. I enjoy these single artist books because often they let you see over time how the artist changes their style and how they change it when they're working on different kinds of images, which you don't get when you get one of the uh, multi-artist books where they just have a couple from each. So this is from 1991. Give some details about him. poster of the life of Brian. So you can see that he's got a lot of detail in here, but it still has that painterly feel that I enjoy so much. You can also see that he likes <laughs> naked women, but to be fair, he's also got naked men. So just the torso and all of it, it's different kinds of iterations. Lots of bright colors. In this case, a lot of dark blues and dark um, purple kinds of things. In this case, lots of bright pinks and yellows, so all sorts of different styles, but often very bold and eye-catching, like the texture of the feathers, the swoop of the dragon's wings, the bird coming down to attack the helpless woman. So um, a lot of these pieces are done for, like this one's done for a role-playing game. And you know, it was just the style at the time to have strong, brave men in armor and then weak women who are either being protected or rescued or that kind of stuff. So it was just the way of the age. These interesting stone statues. Rescuing the woman. <laughs> But, you know, it's usually not the artist's fault because they're being a, you know, this is a cover for a book, so for a role-playing game. So they're being told what to write, and then they are just uh, fulfilling the wishes of the publisher. And these kinds of things remind me of wizards. A lot of these things uh, of this era have a wizard kind of feel because I think that uh, movie had a lot of influence on artists at the time. And got the Three of Night fighting off the snake. Brave Knight fighting off the Cyclops. This is sort of cool, a more fantasy kind of feel. Well, I suppose a different kind of fantasy <laughs> with a lizard person. So I love the colors in this, the blues and deeper blues and the orange against it. And then you switch over to bright reds and golds. So you can see some of these have a more cartoony kind of feel, where some of the other ones have more of a realistic kind of feel. So there's a nice range in here to be able to look at and get ideas for different kinds of projects. I don't like it when they go down the spine of the image, but that one at least is not too bad in terms of the placement of it. Intriguing faces of giants. Mother Goose kind of character with Sherlock Holmes. I like the colors in here, the purples and the reds and the greens. So lots of wild use of colors. Lots of very intriguing kind of creatures in here. Some that almost look like colored pencil in their style. I wish they would say more about the medium that they were using so that you could have those kinds of details. They talk about that it's a cover for a book, nefarious doings at the gas works, but I'd like a little more information about the art and not about the book, because I mean, like if it says cover for a book by Terry Pratchett, Corgi, and then it talks about that it was reissued and that sort of stuff, but I'm less interested in the book's details and more interested in the artist's details about how they created this. So then when you just look at the amount of detail that's involved in the background of some of these. You know, all of the little characters and pieces and everything has the shadows and lighting on it. So a lot of work involved with some of these. You know, this is a tough one in terms of putting it across the spine. You are cutting off a lot of the image, but there are so many little details in all of this that if you put it smaller, you might not be able to 
uh, see and appreciate all of those smaller aspects and the same thing here so I do understand the trade-off between having an image split in two like that and dealing with the repercussions of it but you can definitely see his style here with all of the little bulges and textures he likes making characters that are unusual I think there's been references to him being similar to Bosch in that sense that sometimes the characters are a little unsettling and intriguing. So it's not just the shiny dragons or the shiny unicorns or that kind of stuff. They're a um, little less, you know, I hate to say like pleasant to look at, but a little more um, unusual. these fantasy worlds, the dark trees against the orangey background, maidens and monsters. So she is a warrior maiden stabbing the monster with the spear. So lots of warrior maidens. Funny how warrior maidens usually don't have much armor involved. You think if she was going against this giant monster with this big sword and everything, she might have some actual armor on her body. <laughs> that was the way of warrior maidens, I suppose. Don't want to encumber themselves with any extra armor to protect themselves. But yes, definitely very uh, interesting imagery. Oh, she's got armor, but see, look, she's got armor for some of it, but then like all of her legs are exposed except for these little protective covers there. Mystery. Oh yeah. Bunch of different images. So it's great how your eye is lit up and then into the depths of this goblin cave. Attacking snakes. You know, just very nice use of rich colors in here, especially in this one, the way all the gold glitters and then your eyes drawn to the bright burst of light. And some demon creatures. And again, you get the sense, you know, there's a lot of detail down in the goblins, but then in the sky, there's just a couple of stars to represent a dark starry sky. So it's an uh, interesting, uh, Counterpoint, you know, all the little tiny details of the brick and then just a very clear sky so that your eye gets drawn up into that uh, emptiness, we'll say. And then the weird sisters, got lots of little sharp pointy teeth on this. And then almost caricatures of the different people in here. Another Terry Pratchett. The dragon with all of his details. So a lot of artists would have drawn the dragon as elegant and scaly. And then when you look at this one, you just see all the little bumbly bits. And then the people too, all the little craggly bits in their faces. So they're made more caricature-y. And these are ones that, you know, look at the detail in there, but you can barely see it because it's a small image. So these are ones where I would rather that they had made these bigger size even if they have to put them sideways so that you can see those details because a lot of it gets lost. You can barely see what's going on in some of these areas. So it's it's a trade-off. I understand the trade-off. See, but then look, you get this. This is what these other pictures should be. I know some images in here didn't have a lot of detail, and those are fine at a smaller size. But when you get something like this that has just oodles of little creatures and faces and all of that, it's better to see it at a big size so you can actually see what's going on in the image. Interesting. See, look at the texture of his skin and all of that. And then all the little details of the hourglasses. More Terry Pratchett. More Terry Pratchett. <laughs> and that is pretty impressive. Clearly a lot of time is put into planning and then executing an image like this to get that whole feel of the explosion and the way the eye is drawn into the center and then comes out to the edges with all of the characters that surround it. So there's a lot to appreciate in this. 
gay with florets. Another Terry Pratchett. Hitchcock Poe and Horror. So you can see even when he's doing a person's face, there's all these little unusual details in it. It's not, well, we'll say a flattering picture, sort of an unsettling picture. And like this one with the clawy chicken hand. And the same thing with Poe, with the snakes being part of his face. So a very vivid imagination that he's able to create these images. And I've commented on this picture in another book that I have, the way that the uh, death is cutting down the stalks with the little heads involved. So just a vivid imagination and then a intriguing style with how he pulls it off. Aliens and androids. We've got more creatures, again, those kinds of textures that are involved. Got some robot and outer space kind of imagery. Kind of three-eyed monsters. And you can see the same textures even in his alien creatures. L. Ron Hubbard. Oh, that went over there. And then some more science fiction -y things. So, definitely a unique artist. No, not what you get from a lot of the artists of that era. So well worth taking a look at. Let me know if you have any questions.